Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph uh, the absolute value inequality. And what I have here is y is less than or equal to the absolute value of 3x plus 1. And a lot, when graphing the inequalities, it's just like graphing uh, the equation. Really, the only difference um, really, the only difference with this is now we're going to have some shading into this. Okay, um, So it's, bas it's important to understand, first of all, uh, the standard form of an absolute value. And I also identify the vertex. Now remember, the vertex is going to be where the where the graph is going to kind of shift and change in directions. And this is the parent graph of y is equal to the absolute value of x. And here is also a table. Remember, the absolute value is always going to be the absolute distance. So it doesn't matter what the x value is. My y value, without any transformations, is just always going to be the positive value of that. So what we want to do a lot of times when we're graphing these is we want to be able to identify the transformation. Now, we can see here I have a 3 in front of the x. So that's actually going to be a different equation, which I'll have which I'll talk about here. Um, but I'll talk about more once we have a b and an h. We'll get into this. Um, but what you can see is this 3, that is going to, what that's going to do is that is going to change, um, horizontally compress the way that my, our graph is going to look. So the first thing we want to do is you know, there's a couple of different ways we can graph this. Um, the first thing, we can always use a table of values. But what I always like to do before using a table of values is identify the vertex. And if I look at here, um, the vertex is going to be at your hk. Well, I'm not adding or subtracting anything inside my absolute value. So my vertex is going to be at the point 0. And then k, I'm adding 1, so it's at 0, 1. So therefore, I'm going to go over 1. Now, now that I know, what my, now I know where my vertex is at, now I need to simply need to graph this. And the way that I'm going to graph this, rather, if you notice, the parent graph goes over 1, up 1. Right? But that's for x. Well, what about then if I did a table for 3x, or an absolute value of 3x? So what that's going to do is if I take that same equation, and let's just look at the, um, the function y equals absolute value of 3x. So if I did an xy table, and what we need to do is simply remember, notice how the absolute value has a line of symmetry around the y-axis. So really, all I need to simply do is plug two points to the right or to the left, and then I can reflect them over the axis of symmetry. So it doesn't have to be too much strenuous as you, as you think it would be. So let's just pick the points 1 and 2. So I pick 1 and pick 2. Now, if I plug in 1 in for a, a, um, 3x, 3 times 1 is going to be 3. And then 2 times 3 would be 6. Now, obviously, the real equation is plus 1, right? Now, uh, let's write in the equation. Let's do that. Make, Make it simple. So 1 times 3 is 3. Absolute value of 3 is 3. Plus 1 is 4. And then 2, 3 times 2 is 6. Absolute value of 6 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. So now I can plug the points over 1, up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4. Counting wrong. And then over 2, up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so you can see how, uh, let's reflect them over. So instead of going over 1, up 4, let's go to the left 1, up 4, and to the left 2, up 7. And so you can see how this one is horizontally compressed compared to our parent function. All right, and that is going to be coming to our b, our 3x, and that's why that looks that way. Ah, I forgot. Be careful on graphing this before you look at the inequality. Fortunately, we lucked out. But remember the inequality, we want to determine uh, what we want to be able to determine is, are we going to be shading you know, inside or outside the absolute value inequality? And is our graph a part of the solution? Well, since this is less than or equal to, just like an inequality, since it's less than or equal to, that means any point that's on this graph is also going to be a part of the solution. Now, to determine where I shade, again, we're just going to go through a test point. So I'm going to use my test point 0, 0. So therefore, I have 0 is less than or equal to absolute value of 3 times 0 plus 1. Well, 0 is less than or equal to 0 times 3 is 0. Absolute value is 0 plus 1. 0 is less than or equal to 1. And that is true. So since our test point, which is outside our absolute value, is true, we're going to shade on the outside of our absolute value symbol. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value inequality. Thanks.